Kate, I'm really excited, which Whee! we'll introduce later, to oh. have Jen on. I'm huh. so excited. And so exciting. Penelope! What? She, That's not her name. Is her she's, full name Penelope? No, but I like calling what? her that. <laughs> but she's just, do you hear the squeaky toy? No. I mean, what an attention whore. Hold on. This is good content. Will I leave it in? Will I leave it out? No. Oh, it's Lamb Chop. Yo, you remember this? Lamb Chop underwear. Special pair that you can wear. Only this is from the song fruit that of the never I was waiting for you to join in, but all right. I don't know. I, don't know what I remember. <laughs> sisters, sisters who've seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who've seen it. Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, 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 sisters. Sisters who seen it. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> How we doing? Oh, Are we depressed? Welcome. Oh, so, <laughs> well, so 500 sorry. days of summer. It's either depressed or, <laughs> wow, I'm glad I'm not depressed or fuck love or love is great or who knows, but we're here. 500 days of confusion. <laughs> All right. Let me introduce ourselves ourselves if you are new here so we are the sisters who've seen it the podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological ethical and familial lens i'm katie i'm bridget and we also have a very special guest here today her name is Jenny! Jenny! Hi, Jen! Hi! Holy cow. Listeners, you asked for guests, and boy, oh boy, did we deliver. There she is. I'm here. I'm so honored. She's here digitally. Jen, tell us about yourself and why (laughs) you and Katie became friends. Oh, why? Oh, my goodness. Why did we? Hmm. We lived together freshman year of college. Wow, 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 wow. Well, we didn't live together. I guess we lived on the same floor. You were kind of across. Were you like you weren't right across from me, but you were like no. I was across from the bathroom, and it was the best ever. That is awesome, actually. Now you say I feel like I was in your room a lot. Yeah, I had the party room. Yeah, yeah. Like I would come home from classes, and Bridget would be out at classes. Not Bridget, my roommate Bridget. Would Other be people. out at her classes. We called her Bitchet. Ooh. Bitchet or or Bidgey. Or Bidgey. Okay, that's a more PC version. <laughs> I think we called her that to her in face. It wasn't. It wasn't like mean. That's wow. right. Yeah. But anyway, I would come home and I knew Bridget was out and people would be in my room just like hanging out on my bed or drinking or... You guys made me watch Glee once and I was like, the fuck is this shit? I'm out of here. I did make you watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so fun, I'm Katie. so sorry. So I rude. It. I didn't like it. Oh my God. We watched a lot of garbage in the you know, late 2000s. What are those called? The aughts? So yeah. you basically bonded over partying and proximity. Yeah. And then your love grew. Yes. Oh, our love grew. <gasps> it did. My heart. Wow. It did. We lived together our sophomore year. <gasps> and then our junior year <gasps> was just Jen and I. Wow. Um, and then Jen became VIP sorority president and had to abandon me. And that's when I then became oh. Zoe De Chanel on New Girl. And I then had to live with <laughs> three boys. What a segue. I wow. Know. I didn't even that think is an incredible that, segue. Speaking of Zoe Deschanel. Oh, Jen, what is our movie this week? Sweetest Balls. <laughs> Do we have the rights? <laughs> I mean, singing might be okay, but... 500 Days of Summer. Of Summer. Woo! Um, It's parenthesis, 500 oh, Days of Summer. i set with myself for not writing that. Hot take. It should be called 323 Days of I'm summer. sorry. You oh, did the math that I wanted oh, someone to do. I understand why. Okay, yeah. Mm. Well, whenever we do our movie, Jen, we got to do a synopsis. Oh. So, Jen, you want to give us a synopsis? I am ready. <laughs> I am ready for you to be I ready. Was- 
hoping you would ask. The level of excitement I have is Ikea oh. with me and Summer as if I'm Joseph Gordon-Levitt and we're skipping through Ikea. That's the level of excitement I have right now. All right, just watch out for germs because, like, it's a very public store. Watch out for, like, getting arrested because I you definitely can't do that in Ikea. That. There was a security guard who looked at them and then did nothing. So that guy's not getting paid enough. Mm. Okay, so are you ready for my synopsis? I don't think you're ready. Beyond. Yeah! Ready. Okay, Beyond. I crush can, but that's <laughs> Katie's going to college, right. Katie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Here we go. Hopeless romantic meets manic pixie dream girl and a bad relationship ensues. Ooh. Is that you wrote? Did you write that? Who wrote that? Yes, I wrote that. Oh my Beautiful. god, that sounds like the IMDb just Sean. I did not look at IMDb, so if that Beautiful. is written anywhere on the internet, I, I swear I thought I created so it. so impressed with your poetic writing. Keep going. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, that was <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's it. All right. That's the oh, whole thing. That is that not one. the whole thing? Yeah, Kate, she summed it up a little faster than we do, huh? I don't know how to do that, so... Jen, what year was this movie? Do you remember the year? This movie was 2009, I believe. And were you two in college then? Yeah, for, well, the, for the fall 2009. But I don't know what month this came out. Oh, I don't know either. Oh, but wow. I did watch it my freshman year. I remember seeing wow. it. We were in college in 2009. Yeah. Wow. 2009. The connection. Yeah. Okay, Jen, tell us a little more. Tell us a little more about what else you learned about, you know, so Tommy have, McTomster and Zoe we Deschanel. Have Tommy McTomster. We have Tommy McTomster. He's our hopeless romantic. Uh, we have Zoe Deschanel as our quote unquote manic pixie dream girl. 100%. I did a deep dive <gasps> into my heart. Manic pixie dream girl tropes. Ooh! Um, yes. Because I had never heard of that phrase before. Oh, really? Before, like, today? Or before No, well, I've been preparing for this. I've been preparing <laughs> for this moment for weeks, ever since you asked me to be a guest on your podcast. <laughs> Wait. I watched the movie, like, a week ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, true story. Call me an idiot. I've never heard that before. You haven't? Yeah. No. <gasps> Educate oh. me. The Manic Pixie Dream Girl is this whole trope. I wrote down the definition somewhere <gasps> in my many, many notes. Oh my God. So yeah. impressed with your notes. Wow, 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 wow. The Manic Pixie Dream Girl. She exists solely in the fevered imaginations of sensitive writer directors to teach brooding, soulful young men to embrace life and its infinite mysteries and adventures. <gasps> Nathan wow. Raven. And I feel like they're also usually like hipsters, super yes. hot and like yep. unconventional, but like not really. Quirky. Quirky. Mm-hmm. Specific tastes that suit Tom and only Tom. Mm. Right. Oh, I like the Smiths because no one else has heard of them. Ugh, mm. I'm not like other girls. Mm. I can't. I have a cool style and I like casual this, SEX. Yeah. This works too when it's the male point of view. Like this movie yes. was totally male point of view because I don't think, Kate, how about Nancy Myers? She's not writing a character like this. Like neither of these people. No. no. But it's like, it's like that whole like, like male perspective is the only yes. way that this this would have been created because I would never think of a woman like this. Do you know if a guy wrote this movie? Yes, I <gasps> do. Oh, oh, Jen, go, 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 Jen. His name is something. I believe that Scott News. <laughs> daughter oh. I think he's one of the writers because and the reason I know that is because in the beginning with the black screen and the white writing where it's like this is not based on a true story uh. so even if you think the story's about you it's really not aka Jenny Beckman mm-hmm. and then it says the B word you could say that <laughs> oh okay well I don't know um, it says <laughs> bitch period <laughs> <laughs> that like he wrote the script based on his experience as the tom oh my yeah God. all right this is not a movie i think a woman would ever write even if you flipped genders Mm-mm. i don't mm. think this is well no, but okay no. but 2009 people 2009 because when this came out it was like oh how indie yeah wow they don't want labels crazy mm, mm. we gotta get into this we gotta get into this and i feel like jen you kicked it off by that first little tidbit that this is 
technically based on a true story. All in a man's head. Well. Dot, dot, dot. Like you said, Bridget, the whole storyline is told from Tom's perspective. Yeah. He's extremely flawed, immature, and it's his perspective on his relationship falling apart. Mm -hmm. When, like, in reality, the relationship was not perfect. The relationship was anything but perfect. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of flaws. He has a lot of flaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people come out of this movie not liking Zoe Deschanel's character because they think that she treated him poorly, but, I mean, we will get into it but she tells him up front from the very beginning i want to be friends i'm not into you mm-hmm. i'll have sex with you can i say sex on here yes we can say oh, i don't know anything <laughs> what if the children are listening who cares <laughs> I write it's explicit. It's fine. Okay, good. So you're right. Wants to have casual sex, but at every single point in their relationship says, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. I'm not committed to you. I mm-hmm. said this last time, Bridge, and I stick by my philosophy on this, that I think people will see this movie differently depending on where you are in a breakup. Because if you're the person who broke up with someone, you're going to relate to Zoe, probably. Mm-hmm. If you are the person who got broken up with, depending on what part of your breakup you're at you're probably gonna relate to tom but then you might also understand zoe's point of view because i think by the end they do a good job of explaining that like hey guys tom's like emo (laughs) and like he's gotta take a chill pill Mm -hmm. also how old are we in this movie okay so we gotta say after college right yeah because they they have have working jobs so let's like I mean, do we know? Does does the world tell us? Does the internet tell I us? I do not know. Nobody tells me, so I don't know. I was guessing, like, 25. Okay. Not old enough to be, like, late 20s committed to a career or family or relationship. That's true. But, like, true. also old enough that, like, maybe we've... Like, he went to architecture school. Is that yeah. grad? I don't think so. so. We're, we're not 22, but we're also not 28. 27. The internet says that he's 27. Wow! That's older than I thought it would be. Well, I'm glad about that because that apartment i'm like i don't oh, know oh wait the hector was 27 um, oh so we don't know but let's say he's 27 yeah. <laughs> okay. but here's my problem with that his sister is like 13 oh. well listen we we have our own family <laughs> actually where we have mm, large mm, really, we have large mm. age gaps Okay, wait, that's let's, true. <laughs> let's talk about the beginning with this freaking bench, okay? And let's talk about this weird low voice narrator that oh. shows up once and then shows up never again. And oh. there was a couple other weird shit that popped up in this film that I was like, what is someone doing acid? Because like <laughs> yes. Tweety Bird shows up, they do a, mo- a flash mob, and this guy's voice comes out of nowhere. Does he talk again? And I just don't remember it. He, yeah. he, oh, okay, d- okay. he talks when he's like talking about summer, where he's like, eh. <laughs> you like so unique and cool and you're like wow that's stupid he also talks when joseph gordon levitt's character is tuning out summer's thought like summer's oh. t- talking to him in bed together and the narrator is speaking oh over. yeah the narrator from tom's perspective is speaking over summer i feel like this is every conversation i've had with a man it's just not <laughs> listening i mean they have an older man doing weird <laughs> narration no. They're like, Bridget is saying words, and look at her boobs, and she's annoying, and I'm hungry. Mm. That is literally what was happening. Tom was just thinking about absolutely nothing that Summer was saying. It was this weird man with a deep voice who's like very obsessed with the binary. Oh, oh. Was talking over Oh her. my god. There is only a man, and there's only a woman. I was like, aged poorly. Yes. Um, I wrote, yikes. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. I had some yikes too. Yeah, wait, 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 there wait. were a lot of yikes. Question, question for the two of you. Do you both believe in love at first sight? Yeah, but I also don't have a leg to stand on with that. So am I Tom in my answer? <laughs> yeah. Wait, you believe in it too? No, I don't believe in it. I'm saying you're the Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Jen is Zoe. Dave now, I'm the Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I agree with Jen. I think it's no. I don't think. Well, don't you think both are in committed relationships, and I'm not. Oh. So this is a lesson for us all, I think. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> okay, now here's my question Do you believe in soulmates? 
Yes. Okay, I'm going to quote our father. One vote for yes. I'm going to quote our father with this because when I was little, I asked dad, do you believe in soulmates? I'm a little scared to hear that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, it's terrible. But it's also beautiful. And I was <laughs> alluding to like, is mom your soulmate, basically? And he was like, uh, you know, yeah, but uh, there's definitely more than one. <laughs> Great. Oh. But but I kind of now that I'm older kind of agree because let's say somebody passes away or like just life circumstances you're telling me then you can never find a soulmate again fuck that so now that I'm older I'm like I think I like that answer like yes I believe in it but I think that based on circumstance you can have options like right. you don't need to find one and one only because Lord life is messy and there's a couple yeah I feel that's that. true um I really I don't want to say like, but I appreciate the way that this movie jumps time because sometimes that's annoying. Yeah, but yeah, I like yeah. it in this movie because I think they do do it in a clever way. Yeah, because that bench scene that we start off with, I don't think you do. You see her ring right away or no? No, I did not clock it. I don't know if you do, but either way, it's like you see them holding hands sitting on a bench, and you're like, wow, they're like together. And then, but then as the movie goes on, you find out like, oh, it's not like that happening. Or you're thinking like okay in the three early 300s they break up but that bench scene you're talking about is day 488 yeah so does it take them 100 days to get back together right and like the whole time through the 300s you're saying okay they're gonna get back together though they're definitely gonna get back together or at least try and that is not the, the internet at all. absolutely has to have a data visualization of highs and lows of when the breakup <laughs> happened based on the days <laughs> and if there's not our sister mary needs to create this okay i wow. have it <gasps> Here, it's just not in the order that you want it in. Okay, I want like a one pager, like up and down, a linear chart, and I want like breakup line. A linear chart. Do you mean of this movie <laughs> or of like everybody's breakup experience? No, no. I think I got lost. <laughs> no, like like to your point, it was like day four hundred and forty four. He's sad, and then it's like day five. He's also sad. It, you just keep going back and forth. I'm like, well, when did the breakup happen? It's not around five hundred because to Jen's point, it was around three. I think it was two eighty was the official breakup because there was that I was will. early on Yes, 282, he's broken. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Um, I oh. also want to point out that this is why I asked if this was written by a man, because there is a part where they're kind of, like, getting into the intros, whatever, and, like, you ref- one of you referenced, there's a man and a woman, and... There's only two types of people he in goes, the world. She was an average woman, and a whole girl weighs 120 pounds, which is the weight of my high noon, probably. <laughs> so, that's how you know a man wrote this movie. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Heine. And you said... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I wish I did. That would have been so much better. And true, by the way. Um, I don't understand that. There were definitely references and, and things said in this movie that were uh, not great. Dated. Bad. Very dated. Yeah. And they made so many terribly homophobic gay jokes. Yes. I know! Dude, oh, dude no you're, you're, you're gay. Or like, she's like, I'm not into a relationship. He's like, what are you, a lesbian? I'm like, uh, oh. okay, 2009. Like, ew. And then it comes out that she did have a same-sex relationship yeah. at one point. <laughs> yeah. I felt like they threw in her having a relationship with a girl because, again, to a guy, it's like, that's sexy. Yeah. And you're like, it's not about you, Brian, or whoever uh, you are. Jesus. Meg, it's a straight girl. Do you mean Tom? Who's fucking Brian? Brian? I don't know. That's just Trevor? the name in my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's plenty of them. Daniel? <laughs> oh, man. Let's talk about the greeting card for other Mother's Day. <laughs> what? The fu- I don't even understand what he was saying. I was like, what is it? Was that another gay joke? And I missed I'm like, it. I'm like, wait. I didn't understand. I was like, because he goes, the nuclear family is dead. So we've created Other Mother's Day. I'm like, who is the other mother? I don't understand, again, the math. Like, can someone explain this to me? Is it like step bombs or? Oh, my God. I, okay, so I got to tell you that freaking James, his sister, worked at a greeting card company. <gasps> oh, my God. And they, like. I think they ended up closing down because oh. like, they had Tom working at their <laughs> company and he was yes. the worst. Okay. But 
But she had all these like leftover cards and she would tell these like stories and it kind of reminds me of this. Like, can you imagine working at a greeting card company and someone's like, we just can't figure it out. Like, we've been stuck here for an hour for a Valentine's <laughs> Day card. And I I'm can't. Just like, oh my God, why? People are getting paid lots of money to be like, I love you. Here's a heart. <laughs> Yeah. But it symbolized his optimism, right? Was that kind of like why they like picked that? Because we still don't understand why he didn't want to be an architect. Plot hole right there. All he said was it didn't work out. But in the end of the movie, jump, jump, shot. What is that called? I don't know. <laughs> you jump. I watched your hand motion. I understood. I jumped. Jump scene. <laughs> jump scene to the end. Yeah. Um, he does apply for like 20 architecture jobs and he doesn't get any of them. Oh my God. Right. So either he's not a good architect or it's just a field that's very hard to get into. And then maybe he gave up. So he just was like, I got to make money. Let me go write some greeting cards. Or maybe these places have seen him walking around his goddamn bathrobe on the street corner. <laughs> like an <laughs> asshole. Maybe that's the problem. He's an asshole. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, or he had chalk all over him because who the <laughs> frig has a chalkboard in their bedroom? Wait, I think that's Architects. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you're getting naughty with some guy and and dust particles <laughs> are, are falling on your head, smelling like an old classroom, thinking about your teachers? Well, maybe it's not like near my Ugh. bed. Maybe it's like in the living room over there. So I think it's cool. Bridget, as an artist, I'm disappointed that you don't support well, the chalk okay, walls but better. But he, he wasn't focused. I was like, okay, wait, you have one more job interview to go to. And instead he draws a picture for three hours. I was like, yeah. you need to study. <sighs> hey. well, he's not a good architect. It's just the he mm. thinks that he deserves more in life with romance and career, and he's not willing to put in the work. Ooh, and he's just the worst. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots are true. And they're wow, fired. Wow, wow, Do wow, wow, you wow. want to talk about the sister? Yes. Because yes. 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 Yeah. What, how old is why, she? What's happening? Why is she so wise? How old is she? She's why does 10. she ride her bike in? <gasps> She's ten. Oh, where are they? L A. Where does this? I come? don't know the answer. L A. Is it L A. Yeah. Well, why didn't we go to the beach at so, all? So <laughs> this ten-year-old girl is just riding her bike down the streets of L A. Her mom doesn't know she's out. Her brother is twenty years older than her, and he's breaking plates. And she pours but him she's vodka. She's so wise, and she gives him vodka. Yeah, I feel like Chloe. What's her name? Chloe Mo. Mo Chloe Grace Moretz. Oh, I feel like she is very typecasted and yeah. kind of just plays the same type of personality. Because did you guys ever see the movie Kick? Ass, which I think was also like 2009, 2010. No. Okay, put it on the list. Okay. I don't know. She's just always the same type of person. She plays a very similar character when she's on 30 Rock in the later seasons, which is probably around like the early 2010s. Ooh. Yeah. She's on it. I mean, I appreciate that we at least had some fucking person who was like normal and giving the real talk because I was getting really fed up with his idiot friends who were dumb and mm. again how old are you guys? Uh, why are you there? Um, Emotionally we're 13 but um, physically we're maybe in our mid 20s. Yes I hate it. and I also felt like you are a crappy brother that you're like hey 10 year old sissy can you help figure out my relationship? And he's like it's past your bedtime and you have homework in school but anyway it's about me <laughs> now but then he hijacks his her soccer practice, and he's like, oh, yeah. "What do I do?" That's and, like, weird. Were they orphans? Because where are their parents? <laughs> Can I just tell you, this is some fucking dumbass woman. Like, I'm gonna throw all my shit on women, even as young as ten years old. Tom, okay, mm. get it together. Yeah, Tom, go see a therapist like the rest of us. God, fucking get insurance involved. <laughs> okay, Preach, um, stupid. Okay, okay, okay. So was Tom a stalker? That's my next yes. question. Well, he could have been worse. Or psychotic? Like he thought reality was different I than, think he, than it was? I think he was just like really emo. And mm. like, that's what you do when you're emo. I think the writers made his character into this like, I don't know if they were going, because like we said, it's like this indie film like of the time. Like, were they going for like the anti Prince Charming? Yeah. Where they were like, his relentless persistence is like, no longer tolerated. Ooh. Now it's like kind of creepy and yep, yep. over the top. Yep, yep, yep. 
Yeah. Like his line, you know what I need. I'd Ugh. be like, that's sexual <laughs> harassment. I'll take that, sir. And now I'm going to go talk to the HR guy. Put it on a card, sir. Put it on a card. And <laughs> Put it on a card or get it out. It'll get <laughs> rejected. Rude. But like previously <laughs> in romantic comedies or romantic movies, like you see they bre- the breakup and then you see the guy is like, no, I'm going to fight for her. And then the girl's like, okay, yeah, it's fine. We'll get back together. But in this movie, it was like, no, you're. I told you no. Yep. I told you no relationship. And you're still think that we're something that we're not yeah mm, sir she's mm-hmm. very clear throughout the whole movie to she's li- very clear literally everybody like do we think though she was depressed well or did tom make her sad uh, what <laughs> questions um could be both perhaps i had questions about like wait you moved to a brand new fucking city from so we're in la and she moved from michigan yeah he moved from new jersey (laughs) but like she moves across the country essentially by herself doesn't know anyone gets a temp job and then he's like why'd you move here and she's like i'm bored because she's quirky and she doesn't care about what people think about her Mm. and then like what was her job after she left we don't know. I don't care. We don't, don't know, but it. then she gets uh, married, folks. Yeah. I actually like that. Why? Because it's like shoving it in his face. And it's oh, like... Oh! S- not like... Sizzle, Kate. Not like, fuck you, Tom, but as like a... Because the whole point is she starts off being like, I don't believe in love. And he's like, I believe in love! And then by <laughs> the end, it's like they kind of switch. Yeah. Almost. But then Tom kind of goes, goes back. And she's like, you right. And like, I never felt in love with you. And that was like like the problem but this guy I did and now I'm married and you're like wow yeah, she really tells him how it is. She doesn't hold back. She's like, yeah, I just never felt that with you. That fucking part, too. He's sitting at the bench, like, oh, I got a big interview. <laughs> like, gotta focus. And she's like, hey, I'm back here, too. <laughs> I was like, bitch, why are you fucking crazy? So awkward. <laughs> and then she's like, let me just come on over and sit with you. I hope everything's great. She's like, I'm waiting for my friend Autumn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the beginning of the film in my mind because I can't get past my favorite quote of all time from this movie. Is it anal girl? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay. okay. They called wow. me anal girl. <laughs> okay, girl. I have a story. Oh, oh, no, no, were you no, anal no. girl? No! <laughs> All right. When I worked at my second corporate job, I would say a lot. I'm like, I'm really like anal about this. Like, <laughs> like yeah, but I was like, I, I was very um, naive. Like I was sexually naive that I oh. applied it. I was like trying to explain, like I'm really detail oriented. And it was just like a faster word to say it. And a guy I worked with stopped me once. He goes, Bridget, stop saying anal. And he yelled at me. And so when I saw this movie line, I was like, no, it's me. It's me. <laughs> so, um, for all you listening out there, please don't use the word anal to describe if you're detail oriented and organized. It never works out. Yeah, you don't want to be the anal girl. <laughs> <laughs> or man, I don't know. I mean, you can be the anal girl. Uh, that's fine. But in a work environment, people will assume you're saying something else. You know? Be you. But in the office, there's HR. So, there we go. Speaking of HR. Oh. Make out copy room maker. Ooh. Whoa! Making out on company time. Ooh! Yeah, that was bold. Yeah, oh, she's mm, bold. Mm, but again, mm. manic, manic pixie. I always mess it up when I say it. Manic pixie dream girl. You're totally like, right. That's what. Yeah. That's what he wants. He wants make out in the copy room. Surprise me! I wasn't expecting her to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, all I kept thinking is, no fucking woman is doing this. I'm sorry. They were nope. drunk at a bar and they didn't make out, but they're gonna make out in the copy room no thank you sir maybe your acid theory is true bridge maybe every scene of this movie there's at least one person who takes acid and then like that <laughs> i think that explains a lot actually we've got the bird yeah we've got the narrator uh-huh. we've got the weird talking heads at the very end where yeah. they just like start talking about love it's just like oh yeah their, their head <laughs> I hate that. what about like the sin the- city scene where he like just turns into like an illustration and then they erase the city oh uh, so emo. When his life is being erased from him because he's oh, broken. When Han God. Solo makes an appearance. <laughs> Han Solo. <laughs> that so 
this happens. movie. Yeah, I like that theory. Wait, wait, wait. I want to go back to Ikea. So, yes. wait, so you're... T- you, I thought that was adorable. Nobody thinks that's adorable? That you're pretending oh. like everything's not working? No? I, it's, like, cute, but, like, don't lie on a bed. The making out on the bed was weird. And then the casual racism with, there's a Chinese family in our Hated bed. It. I was Could like... just said family. Could have just said family. the fucking worst. And the family, like, rolls their eyes. They're like, these fucking white people. We can't <laughs> even go to Ikea without seeing some bullshit. Jesus. Amen to that. I just, again, thought it's Tom's perspective. It's Tom's imagination. Oh my god. He's sitting at the dinner table with the knife and the fork, like the man from the 30s who's ready for his wife. Yeah. Like, oh, hated it. I didn't like that. That's hated true. it. Well, Bald eagle. Okay. So then that when they have sex, I do like the scene, but I did read that Joseph Gordon-Levitt didn't like it, which is the dance. The do 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 He didn't like do. that? That's no. the best scene in the He movie. didn't like the, that. I just had sex scene? <sighs> Yeah, he didn't like Why that. Why did he like it? I don't know, but in my head, that's how I think all men are the next day. Like, do you think that's actually how they are? Like, in their head, they have, like, a dance scene? I- I, I mean, as they, they walk to work, it in a while. maybe. I always think Parks and Rec, where they're like, every time Ron has sex, he wears a red <laughs> shirt the next day. And he's like, always in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe each guy has their own something like that. Ooh, Who knows? that's fun. Like a wheel, you spin the wheel, and it's like, he does a flash mob. He has, wears a red <laughs> shirt, you know? Okay, can we talk about why Tom only wore sweater vests? <laughs> Because he's emo. <laughs> Did you guys clock the color, the blue? What about it? Oh, 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 the oh. I, I read about this, Jen. Go. It was blue? Oh, go for it, Did, girl. No, did you read about this? Was blue for emo? No, I just, blue was, I think, summer because mm-hmm. I think every scene, Zoe Deschanel yep. is wearing blue. Yep. Her eyes are blue. Yep. Everything is blue. Yes. Oh. And then the dream sequence, the Hall and Oates song, everything is blue. Yep. The, blue the bird is blue. The bird's the blue, yeah. They're all wearing blue. Everything is blue. Yeah. Oh. It's supposed to symbolize love and they specifically didn't want to use red they decided blue was like the symbol for love in the movie and then when you start to think back you're like wow everything is blue like everyone is wearing blue it's kind of weird you don't is notice it, blue, it but like that color blue is kind of like sad ain't it oh maybe it's a little sad I think. oh the depths mm. the depths of the ocean. romance oh literally at this point in my notes i go what city are we supposed to be in? <laughs> it was so Wait, can we also talk about how Tom wants all women to dress like they did in 1964? Fucking And not that. like 2009 with big sunglasses and dogs and purses. And Katie, as you know, I love Paris Hilton because I think she's underrated. And he was talking about Paris Hilton and that was fucking rude. Because <laughs> he didn't know about her struggles. Okay. Um. Also, Paris Hilton <laughs> recently DJed at Britney Spears' wedding, which happened, yes. like, last month, and Paris turned down DJing for President Biden because ah! she knows she's got her priorities straight, so... Go girl. First of all, who knew she was a DJ? I don't know. She does it all, Jen. She, Bridget has she, her nail <laughs> salon. So I don't even know. What her nails? Got, she got she nails. Her out. nails? I don't know. She does it don't all. Don't start weird rumors. I I'm bought sorry. her nail products. No, Jen, Jen, she's actually a really incredible person. You should read about her. Seriously. She's I'm done fine incredible with things. That analysis. She's done incredible <laughs> things. And Tom, again, was talking shit on her without saying it and want us all to dress like we're 1964. I'm sorry. I don't want to be twiggy i don't want to tom yeah. reminds me of all the guys i was forced to hang around when i was dating certain dudes in high school who now didn't go to college uh work at burger flipping places <laughs> and know. continue to complain about everything and then say hi to me late night when i'm drunk and I say, nope, <laughs> wait but- is that when you're getting the burger or that's just like texting or um no <laughs> the burger <laughs> that's- <laughs> I, I hate that. It reminded oh, me of high school. Wait, wait, wait. I'm jumping. I'm sorry I'm jumping, but I cannot forget this memory. So when he goes with Summer to the wedding, okay? Yeah. And she catches the bouquet. I cannot! <laughs> okay, Why okay, the fuck okay. is she standing so close? <laughs> Bitch, don't believe in love. She's ready for the bouquet. Get out of my face. But at that point, 
wait, is she already dating the her other guy new boyfriend? Yes, I think she's already dating her new boyfriend at that point. Yes, so I think it was like foreshadowing. However, the story I want to tell is Katie. Do you remember? Because I gotta bring him up because he's our favorite. Our brother Jimmy was <laughs> at a wedding, and Danielle, his wife, his now wife at the time wasn't caught a bouquet at a wedding. No, and ran around the wedding with the bouquet, cheering and <laughs> screaming. And and she ran up to Jimmy and was like, you have to marry me now. And can you not just love that fucking moment? Because Danielle is insane. What part of their relationship was this? This was like right before he was about to propose. And oh, she was like, God. let's go already. And she caught yeah. it and she ran around the um, wedding. And I'm just going to say, if you're going to catch the thing, okay, you got to commit like Danielle. Either you yeah. don't catch it and you don't believe in it, or you catch it and then you do freaking football laps. Run and a you lap. Just, you run a lap around, do something. Okay? All right? Because she was just like, oh, me? I just wow. hate I it. Like, Boo, get her off the stage. Oh, my <laughs> God. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Jumped around, jumped around. All right, all right, all right. Um, She talks about her sex history. And as Jen mentioned, one of it was with uh, a woman. And then we also had a well, guy with a big penis. I mean, good for her. Oh, the puma. The puma. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not an animal I would personally pick but all right cool i guess i cannot when he was like the puma oh it must be about his dick size i was like what and then it zooms in on like a uncomfortable pose photo of a man who why did you pick that i hate it and then they did the penis game you know how you keep yelling penis louder did did we all get that from this movie or did we do that and then this movie picked it up i don't know if i like that game that was a thing <laughs> i know i know but i don't think i do that never did it and like why couldn't we scream vagina you know these yeah. are the thoughts so when they showed that part of the movie it was like after we already knew that they broke up oh. that it was like horrible and he's depressed and sad and then like again we're jumping and then it's like now we're playing PS game for <laughs> And I was like, I'm lost. So lost. I'm confused. Where are we on the graph? They do the penis game immediately after. Because you remember that part where they kind of like get in a fight? Yeah. Okay, so they're at a bar. And literally the broiest bro to ever bro came up and was a bro (laughs) to Zoe (laughs) Dejanel. You're with this guy? Yo, yo, yo. Wow. (laughs) Haven't seen you around here. I was like, this doesn't happen. (laughs) But do we think that was Tom's imagination? <gasps> like, we're just seeing what Tom I is. I love it. Tom's reality. I hope so. I hope, hey. Tom was, I hope Tom was the one taking acid in that scene, and that was just a man who literally didn't even mm. look at him, and then Tom ran up and punched him in the face, because that, I right. believe, yep. that guy did not deserve to get punched in the face. Yeah. He was being an asshole, but you don't just go assaulting people just because uh. they're, like, talking near you. I like this theory that the, the constant question after every scene is, did Tom make that up in his head? I like yeah, that question. Yeah. I think that changes the movie, and it's good. Well, that's true, because Summer's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, psychopath? And in that scene, she says, we're just friends. Yeah, says it again. And he gets mad. Oh, and then she runs in the rain to him, because that's what you want, a girl showing up wet at your door. Hate it. And then they spend the night, and then the next day they play the penis game. <gasps> well, and also wow. when she played the penis game, she was like, <laughs> she was like, I still don't want a label. And he's like, cool. And I was like, so what was the point of last night? <laughs> <laughs> You know, at this part, I know we all hate Tom, but I did kind of in my in my head be like, Tom, you need to protect your little heart too, Tom. Yeah, maybe you need to make some better choices. Tom, you he doesn't. This is a universal truth. If you got a booty call, okay, gotta break it off before you get the feels, right? Yeah, you do that. You don't give me a booty call. Being the booty call, but he had the feels. He had the feels in the beginning. He had the feels before the booty. You're right. Well, that's still his fault. So it's all his fault. I blame the penis game on him. Thank you. Good night. Also, he makes a Tourette's joke and I don't appreciate it. Oh my God. And nothing, nothing. Yikes. Yeah. Like aged well. Nothing yeah. aged well. Not good. Even a greeting card company. Um, And also, how about the one guy talking about his dream girl is having big boobs and liking sports, but I, his, that guy sucks. But his girlfriend like Robin that. is better because she's real. I'm like, uh, we're in the age of robots having sex with men and just leave us all alone, okay? 
<laughs> yeah, that was another annoying thing where I was like, his two best friends are like the opposite extremes. One guy's been in a relationship for like 30 years and he's only 27 somehow. And then the other guy hasn't had a relationship since he was 12. Oh like, where are the normal friends? Oh my god. Why is Chloe, the 10 year old, the only normal human the only to give one a relationship them. advice? I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. My second favorite line from this movie comes shortly after Penis Game. They go see the art they bail for the weird movie the french thing mm-hmm. yeah colson do you know this reference katie colson agent colson from freaking avengers bridget doesn't know it at all he was, the, oh, he was tom's boss at the greeting card company he's a guy from the marvel movies He's oh. really important in yeah, the Marvels. He is. Oh, um, oh. He takes one of Tom's cards and <laughs> oh, <yeah>. reads it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. Roses are red, violets are blue. Fuck you, whore. <laughs> <laughs> and did you see that it was an actual card? Like somebody, yeah. like he wrote that. He gave it to like printing. Printing <laughs> made it into a card. Yeah. And then it came to the boss. And the boss was like, oh. Proof again, he should have been fired. I really hope that Rhoda, who had the cat pickles, oh! made the card. Oh, Rhoda! <laughs> I love Rhoda. I will die for pickles. Me too. Rhoda. Wait, wait, wait. Rhoda for president. Okay, Kate. I seriously thought about our, our merch ideas and I think we should make <laughs> shitty cards like what Jen just said oh. and sell them and call them Tom cards and everything is just like really horrible stuff <laughs> like it's like the grumpy cat but like for like emo men well people would buy it I think so right? I will buy everything so um uh yeah we gotta do that okay wow 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 all right wow, well wow. somewhere in here Tom goes on a blind date yeah. again who the fuck set this up this poor girl I don't even think we get her name oh Oh my god. She is what normal. Is her name? She is nice. She is out of his league. And why does she stick around all night and go to multiple places with him? We don't know. But don't she know. does. And it, I hope I, it was for the free food. Because that's what I would do. Maybe it was the friend who's 30. No, who's 27, but has been in a relationship for 30 years. <laughs> them up. I don't know, but like he's So maybe dick. she was just thinking, oh, Robin. I don't remember the friend's name, but I remember I think the his girlfriend slash wife's name is Robin. Maybe yeah. his name is Paul. It's some generic white man name. Paul sounds right. Paul Mike. Him up. John. <laughs> Sorry. One of those. <laughs> Peter, Paul, John. Or Luke, 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 Mark, Sorry. Matthew. <laughs> Sorry. Robin and this girl are friends. And she's like, I don't want to be rude. This is like Robin likes this guy. Let me just stick around. Because there is no other reason yep. for this gal yep. to stick around for multiple locations. Unless you she's getting. location, you say peace. Yep. She might be getting free food and drinks. So guys, like. I mean. Sometimes you got to scratch. Sometimes you're hungry. Sometimes there's diner food. Also, she could have at least sang one song at the karaoke bar. I mean, she made it that far. I'm just saying. I, I, I was like, this poor karaoke bar, like, they're just trying to make a business and all these asshole white dudes keep coming in, getting drunk, being annoying. Like, why? Come oh on. Yeah, he sings at this point, but the first time he did karaoke, he sang a song by the Pixies. Ugh. Oh my Emo. Which is a very obscure, like, 80s band that's not, like, famous, obviously. Yeah. And then Summer gets up and she's like, they didn't have Bruce Springsteen. I know! (laughs) (laughs) They have the Pixies, but they don't have Bruce Springsteen. They don't have Born to Run, but they have a proud to be an American, too, because then the really grown guys start singing that, which was amazing. Also, whatever song she sung. And I gotta say, if you name your cat after Bruce Springsteen and it's Bruce, I think Pickles will be your best friend, okay? (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) That is a fantastic point. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, my God. So, okay, we already got into the part that, like, Tom is just a hot mess drama queen. And I think, actually, one of the best parts of this movie, though, is when he gets invited to Summer's house for a party. And this is oh, his, yeah. like, last kind of, like, little piece of hope of, like, oh, maybe maybe something will be different. And they have the split screen of expectation versus reality. I and do like this part. Can't we? We could all use that in our lives. Yeah. Like, I my- want... 
favorite. I, I want scene. that. I want to go back in my head and like, where's that Black Mirror episode that's actually helpful? That was brilliant. I loved that. That was brilliant directing, brilliant mm. writing. Yeah. Mm. And then not just the juxtaposition of the two, but then at the end of the scene when it like pans merges. To just yeah, I love that. His awesome reality. So good. Do we think that this was an engagement party? Oh, how fucked up would that be? So I kind of did at the end, but I thought, how did he not know that? And then I, I was like, okay, that can't be right. Like, I don't understand. He brought her a present, though. Was there another, like, did she say it's like... Maybe a birthday party? I don't know. No, he brought her that present because she saw him reading it on the train, and she made a comment about it, and in his mind, he was like, she loves this book because she loves me, so she's gonna want to read it because oh I'm psycho. Oh my god. She probably fucking burned it in the fire because she's over you, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I thought, it was called, the book was called the, the architecture of happiness is it a self-help book oh uh, i hope so how awky is your ex like sees you reading a self-help <laughs> book and then you give it to them for a present <laughs> actually i kind of love that idea and i'm gonna pin that in my brain i just keep later. giving brene brown books to all my exes <laughs> like, like, oh i love be better brown. here be better <laughs> um, I don't know. That would be really wild if this was an engagement party. And yeah, he runs away, um, which he should have done like four hours ago, I think. I don't know mm. why he stuck around for so long. Or like 400 days ago, yeah. 400 Ooh. days ago. Should have ran off the roof, yeah. <laughs> Just like pickles. <laughs> oh, pickles. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. How long do we think their actual relationship was? Was it like four months? Or like, what do we think in this time frame? Okay, okay, okay. They start up around day like 31. Okay. And then uh-huh. they end at like 280. So wow. like minus that is like, it's like nine months or something, right? 250. Divided by like 30. 365 is it a year? It's like, um, my. It's close to 10 months. Nine, 10 months. Yeah. Guys, math. Okay, I gotta say, that's kind of a long time for her to be like, bye, I'm going to get engaged. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But at that point, it had been like the same amount of time from the breakup to when that happened. Oh, I so guess, because like, now we got another 500, okay, 500, yeah. two, she was a 250, minus it was 288, like about- <laughs> divided by square root of... <laughs> Carry the three. It's still too early to yeah. get engaged, but mm. it's, you know... it. Jen, speak of your engagement right now. How would you feel? How would you feel? I am engaged. I'm getting married in February. So that's very exciting. Would you Um, would you get engaged after 288 days? Well, no. Yeah. I waited. What's uh, 365 times nine. <laughs> yeah, you and Caitlin have literally been dating forever. Wow, nine years? Yeah, pretty, oh. about that, yeah. Oh I think it'll my be God. 10 by the time we're married. Oh that's crazy. Oh my God, that's just so beautiful. You're like the guy that's been with the girl since oh, kindergarten. No. You're John Jacob <laughs> I'm John Jacob <laughs> But you have much better advice, Jen. Wow. Yeah, you do. Oh my God. Oh, so good. I love it. But the point stands this is too quick to get engaged, people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little love, actually. I thought of love, actually. We're actually, a lot. In this. Actually. <laughs> because it, it come back to men and women, to your point, not talking like cardboard cutouts. Well, and you're like, you're not listening, Tom. She just wants some booty and some yeah. Yeah. Fun. Even that the scene where she comes and the rain and like apologizes, she basically is like, sorry, anyway. And then she like starts making out with him. And I was like, wow, that's like the message. But he doesn't listen to her no, either. He it's, doesn't not, get it. it's not on her. All we know is that Tom goes to convenience stores in his bathrobe after he sees that she's engaged. Tom is a dick to everyone he works with, especially Pickles a Cat and Rhoda. <laughs> and especially. I'm Rhoda. Not fucking here for it. And if anybody starts a sentence off by saying, no offense, but they're about to offend you. And he did that to Rhoda, and I'm over it. Mm. And he has a goddamn breakdown, and then thank God he quits, because I was concerned he was never going to get fired. Um, but mm. now he's gone, and Rhoda is once again emotionally safe from bullying at work. Thank so God. <laughs> that's that. good. Thank God. And Pickles <laughs> card is out there, and I hope we all buy Pickles a card. Okay, it's inspirational. <laughs> 
Um, what did we miss? Because I think we hit everything. I think we hit the highlights, people. Uh, there is one line I really like that, again, it's said by Chloe, who is 10. She says a line that is, I know you think she was the one, but I don't. And I do think that's very poignant. And again, I think when people are in relationships and then you break up, I think that line. I wrote that down. Comes to light a little bit more. Ugh. I know you think she was the one, but you're only remembering the good stuff. Look back again. And if your 10 year old super smart sister tells you, you gotta listen. Yeah. Fact. Exactly. And then we've got chalkboard walls that Bridget hates and job <laughs> interviews that are annoying. And then he meets his next girl and her name is... <sighs> And the colors are different. Wow. Whose colors? Jen. What do you mean? It's not blue anymore. It's not blue. What color Jen? is it? You're so is smart. Is it black? I don't know, but not blue. It's not right. blue. Probably like autumnal. Autumnal. Oh my god. Before he meets Autumn, there's one line that I wrote down when they're on the bench together after they, oh, I guess it's before his job interview when yeah. he's getting psyched up and she comes in and she's like, hey, I'm going to interrupt this moment because <laughs> I'm the worst. Um, She says to him, I hope that you're happy he's not so don't you feel like if somebody says that to you it's just like the rudest thing they could say to you Ooh, i hope you're happy tell me tell me why why, why? is that rude i thought that was nice <gasps> i thought that was oh like like being like oh i because hope you're, you're happy like courteous you're obviously not happy and they know that oh. and they obviously don't care if you're happy <gasps> it's like if somebody says those words to you they hate you <gasps> they're threatening your life oh, <laughs> yeah. that would be a fucking plot twist if she's like <laughs> bench for hours and hours hoping that they come by before their job interview is that they care about you really no i don't i don't think summer cares i think she's a menace she she was no she she was condescending to at the party when she was like tom could be an architect but he'd rather do greeting cards i was like oh Yes. Could have said it differently. So yeah. now tying that with I hope you're happy. Okay, Jen, I'm seeing it. I'm I'm taking the breadcrumbs, making the clues. Well, how should she have ended that awkward bench conversation? Should she just been like Good luck. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Actually, my brain it just went to the Broad City episode where Alana <laughs> and Lincoln break up and she walks away from him and she turns around and she goes, Hey Lincoln. And he looks at her and she goes, <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Summer doing that. <laughs> oh my god! I or she walks away and she's like, "Hey Tom, penis, do something." <laughs> she she could have. She could have screamed, that "Penis!" Been yeah, that, <gasps> that would have been a better then ending. She, that would have showed she cared because that was a fun day for them. Yeah, wow. I hope you're happy. No, wow. If anyone ever says that to you, know that they mean not that. Well, Jen, I'm gonna say that right <laughs> when I see you next. I hope you're happy. <laughs> No, you both need to scream penis at each other, okay? Oh, that's no. We probably have. <laughs> okay, okay, what do we think? Watch it or don't watch it? I would watch it if you haven't seen it. Am I watching it on the reg? No, because it's hard to get through at some parts. I think the movie gets better as it goes on, but you should see it at least once. Jen? I agree. Go see it, you know, if it's free. Don't waste <laughs> money or time. I'm gonna say... And maybe if you're, like, emotional emotionally stable oh only if y'all <laughs> that's not a lot of us no so. it's not because a lot. if you relate to tom you need to think about therapy that's when therapy i comes hope you're in. happy i hope you're happy yeah. um i'm gonna say skip it <laughs> You'd skip it. <laughs> I think the only relevant scene is the expectation versus reality, which is basically a TikTok. Yes. We don't oh, need to watch yes. the movie. Yeah, that's true. That scene is I so just, good. It doesn't age well. I think it could. No. I think there could be a remake done really well, and they need it. And it should be from the woman's, as you say, Katie, perspective. The woman. Yes, Bridget. I love that. Mm-hmm. He's the same soundtrack, though. Like, don't you don't oh, need to change a thing. We're good with all. That. And pickles. Um, we need pickles and Rhoda. We need pickles and Rhoda and the soundtrack. But besides that, yeah, remake it all. And I'd, I'd see it. Wow, wow, wow. Are you Team Summer or Team Tom? It's team Summer. Yeah. Well, so I hate them both. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I don't like the movie. Bridget's Team yeah. Pickles. <laughs> team Pickles. 
best team to be on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. Boy. I don't know. Jen, I assume you're not Team Tom. I'm not Team Tom. No. But I was with Summer the whole time up until she said, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I love your hatred. Katie, for you better not say that to Jen because I'm gonna say it. ever. I'm gonna say it immediately when I see you next in person. That's the first thing coming out of my mouth, and I'll see. Are you gonna write a wedding card and you're gonna sign it? I hope you're happy. Because <laughs> oh that's, that's rude. I'll die. I'll die. Okay. Okay. I, first, I want to take a moment and give a big freaking thanks to Jen because Woo! Jen. Oh my God. You submitted Sisters. this movie request like over a year I'm ago so sorry. <laughs> and I was so excited and I just threw it out there and then you were so awesome you were like I am not gonna say no I'm gonna say hell yes and here you are and we love you so much of course and you're just so smart and it's just so fun Bridget stop <laughs> 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 When Katie asked me if I would be on the podcast, at first I thought, like, she must be joking. This cannot be real life because I love this podcast so much. Ah! I took copious notes so that I could be on par with you guys. Oh, my gosh. have the familial feel so that I could pretend that I am a sister who's seen it. You are a sister. You are. You're a sister now. I feel that. You are. I feel that. You are. But thank you guys so much for having me. You guys are amazing. Um... I love you both very much. We love you. We love you. Do you hear my dog crying in the background? Yeah. I'm so what sorry. What a Tom. All right? Oh, yeah. stop it, sir. Hope you're happy, dog. <laughs> Don't say that to him. I love it. I love him. I'm so sorry. All right. Well, Bridge, it's that time Ooh. for the next movie. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I know you have, like, your own internal ideas of what we're doing and what's happening, but I don't follow rules ever, (laughs) so I just picked a movie that I like, and I was reminded of a couple days ago. Um, I'm going back to the 90s. As one does. Are you surprised? No one's surprised. No one's surprised. Uh, But this is a good one. I'm actually surprised we have yet to do this one, and as is our trajectory, we kind of missed, I guess, what would be the window to do this movie but i don't give a fuck we're gonna do it now this movie's from 1996 Ooh. it is classified as a action adventure sci-fi wow 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 i'm gonna read you the synopsis and let's see if you know what it is. The aliens are coming! And their goal is to invade and destroy Earth. This is not science. Fighting superior technology, mankind's best weapon is the will to survive. Oh. And I want to emphasize the word their will to survive. Perhaps their will Smith to survive. Bridge, this is the 1996 <laughs> movie Independence Day! <laughs> We will go into the night. We will fight. Today will be our Independence Day. Can I tell you what timeline are we on? Because Will Smith is smacking people and there's just mass shootings on our Independence Day. And what the fuck's happening? Okay. Let's go back to Independence Day. I want to go back to 1996 and we need to figure out how to fix this timeline. We've got Will Smith. We've got Bill Pullman. We've got Jeff Goldblum. We've got... uh, uh, Randy Vivica, Quick. Vivica A. Fox. <laughs> Vivica A. Fox. We've got Brett Spiner. We got Jeff Goldblum. Some other Jeff um, Goldblum. I said that. Already. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, this movie kept being played nonstop on TV over the weekend because it was leading up to 4th of July. And I was like, you know what? Let's fucking do that. So we're going to do that. I love that we didn't sync it with 4th of July because there are no rules. No rules. And this 4th of July was horrible. So hooray. Yes. Um, yes. So. Wow. Uplifting. Well, just like 500 <laughs> Days of Summer, we're all depressed and there isn't love and your head and soulmates and I don't someone help me can someone talk well Bridge <laughs> um, and Jen Jen's still here by the way everyone I, she's been quiet I've never seen Independence Day what 
What? I, I know. never made you watch it? Wow, 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 no. wow, wow, wow. Well, now you're going to see it and you're going to listen and you're going to tell us if you agree. I'm ready. Agree with what? There's an opposite. With the aliens? What do you mean? Oh, Why we talk thoughts? about it? I was like, well, we can all agree that Will Smith beats up an alien. All right. Um, <laughs> well, Bridge and Jen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say um, that if you guys got reading cards from me <laughs> that I wrote oh, at my job that I hate. Don't you uh, dare. I would. Don't you dare. I would not write, I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> or roses are red, violets are blue, fuck you whore. <laughs> Those would stay out because I love you both. Wow. Yep. Well, Kate and Jen. Bridge. Mm. I hope at Jen's wedding, Kate, you surprisingly catch the bouquet and then oh. run around like you are at a football game <laughs> and you uh, spike the bouquet and everyone is like, that lady's so cool i wish i was her would they say cool or would they say she's wrong hmm. both and i think all that's right. cool all right i'll do my best and you'd say this is for summer and then you'd spike it okay i'll try to remember that <laughs> sisters i Jen. hope that in the next 500 days you get 500 thousand subscribers <gasps> and have all of the $15 checks your heart desires. Wow! Oh, we hope that too. Oh, wow! I got you a subscriber. Woo! Wow! I told one person that I was going to be on this podcast before. You only told one? (laughs) And it wasn't because I thought it was a secret. And it wasn't Caitlin? (laughs) Did you tell Caitlin? I, I told Caitlin, but oh, she's at like, a concert wait. tonight. <laughs> I told one person, so you're welcome. Wow. We love it. Well, and listeners, if you also like um, s- sassy greeting cards, my my brain almost said slutty, and that's not right. If you like <laughs> sassy greeting cards and catching bouquets and running around on uh, football fields. <laughs> and if you also like Jen A, who was oh. here today, which oh. we all oh. like, you should write us a review. Hey. We love reviews. We love written reviews. You can review us on Apple Podcasts along with some other podcasting apps. We also have a website, sisterswhoseenit.com. Bridget updated our website. And on our website, you can request a movie. So if you want to be like Jen A and request a movie, you can do that. Yeah, you and can. And Bridge, what else can they do on our website? You, they, you guys, y'all. <laughs> Ken, buy us <laughs> coffee. <laughs> and, and, you know, I really need to fix where I put that on the site because it's technically in the about section. Oh. And then there's like a black button that says buy the sister's coffee because it's after meeting us. But, I mean, if you want. But you don't have to. Like, you I should re- want. Do okay, it. you should do it. Just do like, it. You just know? do it. Yeah. No or if we come just out juice. with the grumpy cat Tom greeting cards, just buy Ooh. those. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So check all that out, and we hope to hear from you. All right, listeners. Well, a big thank you to our Jenna for being here today. Jenna. Oh, you. Thanks, ladies. You're you. the best. We love you. Love you. All right. Well, all right. we'll see y'all next week, listeners, for Independence Day. Welcome to Earth. That's all I remember. <laughs> Bitch. Cool. Says. Love yeah. you. Bye. <laughs> I love bye you. Bye. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in to Sisters Who Seen It. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com, where you can email us, request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.